So welcome everybody. The presentation is about to begin. Um, the session will be about 60 minutes. Um, if you have questions or comments, feel free to enter them in the chat at any time. Um, and the presenters can address them at the end or as we go, if however they decide. Um, so this webinar is presented by TESOL International Association's Reading and Vocabulary Interest Section. Um, it's titled Engaging Latino Students During Read Alouds with Informational Texts in Dual Language Classrooms. We're very pleased to welcome you all. My name is Hedda Asher, and I will be the moderator today. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Dr. Pleiss, um, Mr. Pineda, and Ms. Quevedo. All right, over to you all. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. We're very excited to share our work. I very, have been very fortunate to work with uh, Ms. Mr. Pineda and Ms. Quevedo on this. And so um, we will be sharing um, the, um, in, in, in each individually. Um, first, I'm gonna share um, a study uh, that addressed um, uh, the informational text in dual language classroom. So I'm going to give background of the of the study, and uh, and then um, um, Mr. Pineda and, and Ms. Quevedo are going to um, present. So basically, um, the study addressed um, academic Spanish development and literacy teaching with informational books and the intersection of these two areas. Um, this was a study done in a, in a bilingual teacher preparation program, um, and the motivation for it is uh, rooted in, um, by, in a bilingual teacher preparation program where uh, bilingual teacher candidates have um, opportunities to recontextualize their experiences with language, with culture, um, and uh, resituate themselves in terms of revaluing personal experiences as sources of knowledge, revaluing their bilingual language practices, revaluing their literacy practices, and those are the arrows that you see going up. And those arrows going up um, uh, are kind of uh, acting in the opposite directions of the arrows going down, which is the, the effect of uh, policies and systemic influences that tend to negate these personal sources of knowledge. So in the middle, we have the program where they reconfigure the, themselves and, um, and then end up creating new opportunities for, um, for pedagogies in, in, in dual language classrooms. And uh, so that's just kind of the context of the study. The purpose of the study uh, is to explore how Spanish speaking bilingual teacher candidates use language and implemented pedagogies when teaching with Spanish informational books during a bilingual pre service preparation program. So, uh, you're going to have a direct uh, 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 sharing from two of the participants in this study. Let's so, just kind of, yes. Your PowerPoint is not on the screen, it's not showing oh, up. I thought that I was sharing. I, you show, you it shows your desktop. Oh, so let me stop sharing again. And, and I thought that I was sharing. Okay. Are you seeing now? Yes, now, you see, now we can see it. Um, hmm. Sorry, I thought maybe I thought maybe you wanted to do an introduction before you shared yeah. your PowerPoint. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was showing all all of the images. Oh, and so according to me, I was going through the images. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So basically, I'll just go over it again. You can see the slides now, right? Right. Okay. So the focus, and I'm going to go back because this is a beautiful visual um, illustrating the experiences. I was saying the motivation for this study is a is a bilingual. Uh, teacher preparation program where uh, bilingual teacher candidates have the opportunity to revalue personal experiences, language practices, and literacy practices involving Spanish. And these are the arrows going up um, 
uh, to, to, to kind of act in an opposite direction to arrows going down, which is the, the pressure from the system to negate these experiences. And so in, in, the, in the program, they revalue these, these um, experiences with language in a way that creates opportunities to um, implement new pedagogies in, in, in dual language classrooms, which is what I'm going to explain as part of a study. And then Mr. Pineda and Ms. Quevedo are going to share directly from you. So I'm gonna share, like I said before, the purpose of the study, which is to explore how Spanish speaking bilingual teacher candidates use language and implemented pedagogies when teaching with Spanish informational books during a bilingual pre-service -pre preparation program. As we, as we all know, um, from research studies done in elementary classrooms, informational books are, 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 are scarcely implemented in early uh, grades. And so this was an innovative study in the sense that informational books um, are used in the early grades. And it's also innovative because of the, the use of informational books in Spanish. So um, in terms of the, the, the literature strands that, that guided this review is basically a conception of reading and writing as situated social practices. It's also um, taking into account uh, previous research on the role of Spanish uh, with, um, um, as part of um, the use with informational text so, that, so as to promote Spanish development um, in students in dual language classrooms and also in bilingual teacher candidates because they created these books. And, um, and then, as I said before, uh, the informational, it, it covers a gap in terms of the, the, the scarcity of informational text in, in, the, in the early grades. So these are the three um, gaps that it, that it addressed. And so um, the specific question is, how do Spanish speaking bilingual teacher candidates use the Spanish informational text created by them when teaching a read aloud lesson in a dual language elementary classroom? So the context is um, the student teaching semester. These students um, uh, went, go through a four semester program and in, the, in red in, during the Spanish language methods course, they create an informational book. And I here would like to take the opportunity to honor a professor who has for decades guided students at UT Austin in creating these books. Her name is Dr. Aide, Aide, Aide Rodriguez. I'd like to just mention a, a, a minute to honor her work because it's in her course that they created these books. And so in the second semester, in this case, and then in the fourth semester during this teaching, student teaching seminar, uh, students um, use the book that they create um, to teach um, a, a dual language, to teach a, 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 to teach in, in, to teach a read aloud lesson with their informational book in Spanish in a dual language classroom. And so some challenges emerged um, in, in those contexts. So originally for this study, there were four participants and um, they had um, three of them uh, had the US as a country of origin, one from Mexico, uh, different experiences with bilingualism. We have uh, two simultaneous bilingual, one sequential, and one who reclaimed Spanish in college um, after, after having abandoned it. And so I want to go ahead and share um, a little bit about just the methodology with qualitative studies. So we did open coding with several sources of information, um, observing um, the, the lessons, interviewing the participants um, iteratively. And then uh, the coding, uh, qualitative coding to identify emergent patterns and the cross case review, because this is a multiple case study. And the main findings is, uh, are these four areas. So these, these teachers uh, implemented innovative um, approaches to connect uh, the informational text in Spanish with Latino experiences to teach, to enact new identities and cultural roles. They also enacted pedagogies to bridge the Spanish text with, with native English speakers and um, in terms of language, but also in terms of culture. So those are the four main themes. And here we have, I'm just gonna give you a few examples and then we're gonna go with uh, our two wonderful um, teachers who were part of this study. And in this, um, this is one of the other participants who uh, I want to share a few minutes, her approach for working with the informational text was to bring some objects, 
her 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 work uh, her book was about the the making of the tortilla and she revalued the knowledge in her family to create a book and her innovation was to give a space to students um, Latino students who had um, usually were quiet and um, she opened a, a, a space for them to to share their personal experiences with tortillas and um, she also employed a conversational approach in in the teaching of her lesson and so instead of following uh, like a prescriptive um, sequence of of steps and strategies she uh, she created a comfortable space for students um, to share their experiences and she she uh, at the end after the lesson when she reflected she she noticed that uh, what moved her the most was that some students who hardly ever participated in the classroom in that in that lesson um participated in in new ways so it it seems like like a minor adjustment but it was uh opening up by op by by creating safe spaces for La latin latina students to to share their experiences then we have another participant and he's here with us today mr pineda and he enacted uh creative approaches to because in his context, um, uh, students, there were a lot of native English speakers. So he his approach was to start with a book, um, we start with a with a, an experience where they um, where they uh, related to a to a similar experience. In this case, it was the topic was immigration. This was the book that he created, but he started by um, by developing background knowledge by doing an experience first in English. And as you and um, and having um, and he first had actually some slides and kind of had a conversational approach also to build background knowledge in English and then he introduced the book in Spanish and um, he he implemented strategies to to develop empathy and to react to images that that were representative of distant experiences but that because of the approach that he implemented allowed a space for these students to to be sincere and honest about immigration from their own points of view so um and then he also implemented uh, uh an innovation in 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 the writing response and by by allowing a space for students to enact new identities in this case uh, uh, being asked to to identify three objects they would take if they were to uh, leave the place where they lived immediately. So in a way, connecting with uh, immigration experiences. So, and then I want to share um, the other our other participant, and she will then later um, share her approach as she's uh, implementing it now. But in terms of the study, what what was incredibly innovative is that she um her approach was to meet with students in in extra time she devoted extra time to meet with students to find out uh something in students lives that they felt knowledgeable about that they could write about and so she took the time to interview students um so that so that she would find something that they had knowledge to share about and so in this little dialogue yeah, um, there was one student who was shy and so she asks the student what did you do during your vacations because this student didn't know what to write about and so the student says well I went to Mexico and my grandparents um, um, uh, allow me to feed the animals so then um, Miss Quevedo said well that means you know about how to do it why don't you write and teach me how you, how you did it so she positioned this student as a knowledgeable student and reverse this assumption with students of 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 of, of feeling that they didn't know what to write about so um and what one of the comments and as I, that's why the relationship uh, with uh, the experience that she herself had had in the bilingual teacher preparation program is that uh, her comment was just like she had the experience of va valuing her knowledge her culture she did the same with students and then her cooperating teacher later um, said that they had never done in the classroom what she did which is she created this encyclopedia with the knowledge of all the students from the writings that they created in that lesson and so and then just uh, very quickly in terms of the language and bridging strategies across the four participants 
um, some of these strategies you're familiar is teaching Spanish vocabulary for 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 language strategies. Um, one aspect that was very interesting is the use of, of translanguaging. In some cases, um, these teachers uh, may began the lesson maybe only in Spanish, and then as the lesson progressed, they relaxed the rules of separating Spanish and English to allow students to use both the both bilingual repertoires. And um, and then another another approach for language was a situated vocabulary instruction. So there were there were a variety of approaches in terms of language bridging and in terms of cultural bridging. Um, four main patterns were identified: this bringing of objects from the book to arouse cu curiosities. In the case of the tortillas, um, she brought aspects related to the to the to the process of making tortillas. Another of the participants included a community building experience or uh, having two lessons and, and then uh, reconfiguring a worksheet instead of making it something um, procedural and boring, making it interesting to students. So um, that's it for my, my introduction. And now you have um, our wonderful two participants to share their own work. And so now we have Ms. Mr. Pineda. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Luis Pineda. I am currently a teacher in third and fourth grade uh, dual language, teaching uh, the science and writing social studies portion. I graduated in May 2019 from the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm currently employed in the Houston Independent School District. Uh, a couple of accolades that I have right now, uh, beginning teacher of the year in 2019-2020 and bilingual teacher of the year in 2020-21 and 21-22. Uh, in the creation of my book, uh, I titled it Un Camino Lejano, which means a, a long journey. Uh, and it was inspired by the idea of uh, the journey coming to America, the immigration journey that uh, occurs for uh, people who are traveling from one country to another. And this was a one of the first topics that I had in my head. I had already created the title instantly uh, by just getting inspired over the things that I knew and, and I am passionate about. And I was really wanting to share this with my students. So this was uh, my way of honoring Sistema Latino family knowledge and experiences. Uh, my table of contents in my book, uh, of course, presented all the different pages. But I also, in my book, I presented real world pictures that depicted uh, immigration occurring in different parts of the uh, different parts of the world, just to show that it, it is something that students can see real world pictures. And it's also as well as some pictures that are mine from my family and also putting that personal connection inside. In bold, I made sure to create also the words that had a vocabulary at the end of the book. And these words, of course, were words that we had already touched upon in the previous book that I had used, which was uh, Yuyi Morales Dreamers with uh, the students in that class. And Talking about dreamers, one of the biggest book uh, strategies that I used was visuals and personal connections. I knew that this was a kindergarten class and uh, a lot of the words that were coming, probably they were some of the words that they did not know or possibly maybe have heard, but didn't know the meaning of. Visuals in this book were very great. They were amazing. And they were something that the students, their eyes just caught onto them. And that way we could build connections between visuals and the words. Personal connections, the students, of course, are also looking at these pictures. They're looking, oh, okay, these are things that I can see. These are things that I might know about. And that way students that might have known a little bit of what immigration was started connecting uh, to the book and also their funds of knowledge were also displaying. The empathetic connection uh, while reading Dreamers by Yui Morales, students were able to make an empathetic connection between the book and the people that were in the book. There were certain aspects where the students did feel very much empathy for the characters in the book due to certain things that were going on. And in that way, they also took that into the next book, which was the book that I had created. Uh, the dual language setting, vocabulary. Vocabulary was very important. This book I chose for pictures and vocabulary. That way we could develop funds of knowledge. 
And the next day, the following day, it would be a transition into this informational book, which was a lot different from the dreamers book, which was a small amount of words, a lot of pictures. Mine was a contrary. It was not a lot of pictures and a lot of words. And my pedagogical st strategy right here is the windows and mirrors. Windows and mirrors, I think is very important. It, it just the books speak to various audiences. And in my book, I really try to emphasize just the focus of windows and mirrors. Some of my students were able to see themselves in this book, make that personal connection between their own families. But for a lot of majority of my students, there was a lot of windows that opened up. And throughout the years, uh, as I've been teaching these past three years, it's also just been a, my biggest motivation to teach not only my book, but also across my teaching as a whole, whether it's the Hispanic community, which is the African-American community, Windows and Mirrors, because I teach in a dual language setting, we have so many cultures, so many backgrounds that we open up different things, whether it's seeing ourselves in this, in this light or across windows where we can see different aspects of different people. Representation, very important. It, of course, if I'm speaking to, my, uh, to a community that it's about, it's very much speaks to them, but it's also allowing students to make connections and see the value of themselves. Uh, culturally responsive pedagogy, environment, and empowerment. I felt like my book was empowering for students, and in many, in many ways, students left feeling good after reading it. And to this day, I have my book in my classroom where some students uh, have taken it home because they want to show their families, show this connection that they've made, uh, not only of the Hispanic background, but of other different backgrounds and seeing that this is a book that they have seen that their teacher has made and they have uh, seen a different part of a culture. Okay, and now is my turn. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure. Yes. Okay, sorry about the noise. Um, I don't know if you can hear the noise, but there's noise outside my window. Okay, anyways, my name is Olga Quevedo. I am, um, I was born and raised in Mexico City until I was 15 years old. And then my family and I moved to California, where I graduated from high school. Then eventually I moved to Texas. Um, in 2006 when uh, where I started working for the Head Start program as a pre-K teacher assistant and I did that for about 10 years and that's when I fell in love with the teaching profession. I felt like I, I could do more for future student generations so I decided to go back, go back to college and I graduated from the University of Texas in the spring of 2019. I currently work for the Haro ISD in Haro, Texas as a bilingual pre-K teacher. Okay, um, as you know, I had the, um, when I was at the university, I had the opportunity to write an informational book. And, but it, this book also had a personal connection. And I decided to write about pan dulce, which is sweet Mexican bread. Uh, since it brings me sweet memories of when I lived in Mexico with my family. So the title of the book is Pan con Leche, which is an expression my dad used to say when I was a child and he used to ask me to go with him to the bakery, bakery down, down the street to get some bread and milk. And when we came back home, we all enjoyed a glass of, um, glass of milk and a piece of sweet bread. So, um, Pan con, we all had pan con leche. So uh, family meals that included pan con leche, they were always something meaningful to me when I was a child. And um, I include that information in the introduction of my book, but the, it focuses on the or, historic origins of the sweet bread, sweet Mexican bread. And as you can see, like in the gray picture you see in the slide, um, some of the bread uh, resemble objects like this one is called concha, which, is, which in English are seashells. So for each bread I include the name of the bread, uh, pictures and the historic origin of the bread. <clears throat> 
And as, as I did research on the bread, I realized that it was not only something that you can enjoy with a glass of milk. Uh, some bread are, uh, are part of strong cultural traditions, such as El Dia de los Muertos, where we can eat pan de muerto or the day of uh, the bread of the dead. And I included um, a little part, a small part where I explained how the bread came to be part of that tradition. And another tradition is uh, El Dia de Reyes um, or the Three Kings Day or the Three Wise Men Day where we can um, eat Rosca de Reyes, uh, which is a bread that represents a king's crown and it's decorated with dried fruit and other stuff. And it's really good. Um, I also explain a little more about that tradition in my book, but I decided to include those two traditions because they are important and meaningful to me and because uh, I wanted my students to learn more about it, about, about them, and because uh, I think that by writing about them, it's a way to keep traditions alive. <clears throat> okay, uh, during my, um, when I was a student teacher, I had the opportunity to use my informational book in a lesson. And uh, I used it for a, a second grade class. I was in a second grade class, dual language second grade class. And the objective of the lesson was to expose students to informational texts and have them write informational texts. So I used my book um, not only to encourage writing, but also to give students an author identity and to value their forms of knowledge as well. I was following a humanistic approach in this lesson. So I thought it was necessary for me to um, learn, learn more about my students. And uh, I decided to just hold more co conversations with them during recess. And I learned a lot about each of them. And that gave me, they, uh, it gave me an idea of what they knew because I was going to use that information for my lesson. Um, so as an overview of my lesson, I started by exposing the students to key vocabulary terms in my book since not all of them were Hispanic or spoke Spanish. So I showed uh, um, vocabulary words and pictures in a PowerPoint presentation, which made the content uh, more accessible to the students. And then what I did is that I explained to the students that they, will, they would be writing a, an informational paragraph. And I just gave them a simple criteria to follow when thinking about their topic. I just told them it has to be something important for you, something meaningful that you want others to learn about. And I told them, just like in my case, it was the, my experience with the sweet bread and I wanted others to learn about the history of it. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna think about something that's meaningful to you. So um, I gave them a couple of minutes to share their ideas with their classmates and they talked. And then I just explained like the format of the, pair of the paragraph that they had to write. It had to include an introduction, a body and, um, and a conclusion. And I explained the introduction. In the introduction, you have to say, um, explain the topic and how you learned about it. The body, you have to uh, be uh, get more detailed on how to do something that you know. And the uh, conclusion, you just have to explain why is it important that others learn about your topic. And just to help students stay on task, I gave them like pieces of paper with the instructions of the three parts of their paragraph. And I, that helped them stay on task and work indep independently. They just had to check off some uh, check boxes that the paper had. So it was, that helped, that helped me a lot in the lesson. Um, what else? Um, it was really, uh, really exciting for me to see, uh, see the students engaged in writing and hear their conversations about their topics and share their ideas and what they knew. That's the, that was very uh, exciting for me. <clears throat> okay, and uh, well, this lesson took more than one day. I didn't plan it like that, but it extended like a week. So when the pages were finished, I 
just gave the students a brief overview of all, all the pages they, they had written. And I talked about the valuable knowledge each of them possessed. And I told them that by writing about that, they were sharing their funds of knowledge with other students. So the students uh, were really proud, really proud of their work. And they, some of them were very surprised to, um, to hear what others had written. Like there were topics like how to feed farm animals, how to communicate in sign language, how to uh, dominate the monkey bars on the playground, how to identify different dog breeds. So yeah, the topics, the topics were very huge. I mean, it was a great variety of topics. Can you go to the next slide, please? Okay. Oh, thank you. So uh, since I started working as a pre-K teacher in a dual language class, I've been using my book to expose students um, to early literacy and help them develop language. And it has worked for me. Uh, of course, for pre-K students, I always do different scaffolds. Like when I, when I uh, teach, when I pre-teach vocabulary, I do a lot of total physical response since young students learn better when they do some kind of movement as they are learning. And I don't read the book, I just show the, show the pages and I explain the content. But we spend a lot of time making personal, personal connections to the text. And I provide a lot of linguistic support since I model how to speak in complete sentences. And then I also provide sentence stems, sentence stems or sentence frames that we repeat orally first and then the students complete the sentence in a writing activity. So for, as you can see in this picture, that's the kind of, uh, that's the page I give, I give them when we do this activity. So they have to draw first and then complete the sentence, which is mi pan favorito es, and, they, and then they just write the word. And that's it. That's, um, those are the, the, strategy, the strategies I use with my pre-K students and it has worked. And that's all I have for you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, um, as you can see, you saw, um, you saw um, a study and its results with four participants and you, uh, you heard two approaches for engaging students in dual language classrooms. Um, Mr. Pineda's approach was, in, in Mr. Pineda's approach, students stayed on the topic of the, of the book. And so he, he developed activities to engage students with the topic of the book. So that's one option. And then, um, and then he described all the specific activities he did. In Mr. In Ms. Quevedo's case, her approach was to replicate uh, the process that she had creating the book. So it was a different approach for the reading response uh, in these two examples. And, um, and, um, and these two examples both refer to informational texts that were written in Spanish that were culturally relevant. So we would like to now open it up for questions and then we have an activity um, for you to engage in your own proposals uh, with your own options in, for dual language classrooms. But first we would like to see if you have any questions. It looks like there are no questions. Any more comments that uh, you would like to give, um, Hetel, Or do we move on to the Jamboard activity? Um, we can move on to the Jamboard activity, but if anybody thinks of questions, if you just type them in the chat, maybe we can come back to them later. Okay. Okay, so. You can see the, the Jamboard, correct? And I'm gonna post a link. Trying to, I'm not seeing the, 
Um, I, I have the link as well. I can post yeah. it. Great. If can you post it? I'm, I'm not seeing the. Mm -hmm. So um, while she shares the link, I'm just going to explain a little bit what the what we're asking you to engage in is basically there's different there's two options in terms of the type of text um in one of the options you choose to use a spanish informational text in another one you choose an english informational text and we would like you to brainstorm your ideas and then put them on the jamboard as to what context you work in and what kind of informational text will you use if you have the name of it, then to just uh, put it, use a sticky note and share your ideas on the pink quadrant. And then um, the other three quadrants are to share your ideas on strategies that you would use to connect your book with uh, Latino students in dual language classrooms um, in terms of um, you know what comes to mind in terms of these connections. The, did the presentation motivate you in any new ways? Do you have your own approaches that you'd like to share? And then uh, one aspect that tends to be ignored when we um, follow uh, just a, when you only think of strategies, right, um, is to ignore the identity piece. And so I think we've, we've um, We've we've shared our approaches uh, to uh, pedagogies in with informational text where identity plays a role, and uh, uh, both Mr. Um, Pineda and Ms. Quevedo um, shared details of that. And so now we would like to invite you to share your own approaches, where the personhood, the the identity of the students is considered as part of the. As, as part of the engagement. And then what we're mainly, mainly more, you know, familiar and uh, is usually more promoted in classrooms it are the vocabulary strategies. And um, so what are your vocabulary strategies? Will you go for pre-teaching vocabulary? Will you go for showing visuals and, and doing an embedded approach? And then how will you approach the cultural differences? In, in your classroom, uh, maybe between you as a teacher and your students, among students themselves. Um, in, in, in the examples for this study, there were there were students who were native English speakers with, with Spanish speaking students. And so, you know, situations now are very complex. It's not so easy to follow one script. You always have to innovate and teachers have amazing um, talents to innovate on the spot. So we would like to register your contributions in the Jamboard. So that would be the next step. Hello. Uh, my name is Artemis. Um, I came to the US uh, a couple of years ago <clears throat> from the United Kingdom. Excuse okay. my voice because I keep losing it today. <clears throat> I'm very new to uh, teaching in a um, classroom environment. I, I, I used to work in higher education back in Sheffield University. So when I came to the, uh, to the US um, due to problems finding jobs in my field, which was TESOL in general, um, I decided to get a certificate and work in a school. And the teaching licensure in Indiana was something I did and immediately got, got recruited. And I'm working as an ELL teacher in a middle school. It's a K to 12 school, but I'm, I'm in charge with the middle school uh, bilinguals, the majority being uh, um, Latinos, Spanish speakers, a few minorities of African speakers, um, African um, students, and uh, but the majority are, are, are Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to relate the, the experience that you, you shared as teachers and as researchers and how it could relate to my job. Because as I said, I'm very new to this field of work um, and I'm doing everything in my power to, to help my middle school uh, bilinguals or I'm immersion bilinguals to, to get that confidence in things like read alouds that you just mentioned. Um, so I just loved listening to you and the fact that the, the, the projects that you've worked on and I was thinking of what I can do for, for my students as a new teacher in this field. So what new ideas came to mind for you? 
Well, the, the creation of the books that you just mentioned, the way that you made them relatable culturally and individually, um, it, was, it was quite interesting for me. Um, we do have a good range of books. I do have resources that I use with my students. So I think um, sometimes getting, getting that, sometimes there's a missing link there that how I'm making it relatable to my student, um, which I need to focus more on basically, rather than just, just introducing a new topic. But as, as I said, I'm working with mainstream teaching. So I have to teach them a lot of about their own content that they're studying and helping them and holding their hand throughout that. And that, that proves a bit difficult. For example, if they're studying about World War and how the United States reacted during that time, I'm not quite sure how I can make something like that relatable to a student who is not from the United States. Mm -hmm. So those are my my kind of areas that I need. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or poetry, for example, things like that. I have to. It, it's I'm bilingual myself. I'm I'm actually from Iran. I'm Persian. So I understand the struggles of a bilingual student. Um, but I think the cultural aspect of it is the most important thing because if you can't connect culturally, the language doesn't come. Um, the way you want it to, you know, naturally be acquired. So finding that missing link, that that connection, that cultural connection, that understanding of how I can relate to this content, to this context, to this topic, um, that that's that's a that's a struggle sometimes, and it's a challenge that I I, I welcome to learn uh, from any anybody in the field. Well, I do have 25 years of experience of teaching, but this is this is a new challenge for me. Right. So, um, so in terms of um, the, you say, you know, the cultural connection is the most important, and from the cultural connection, the language will will flow more easily. Mm -hmm. So, and then when you're teaching content that is apparently not relatable that can be a big challenge especially in middle school absolutely um, so what could be what are our presenters our teachers what do they recommend in terms of engaging middle school students um, so that their personal experiences their identity is is part of the learning with an informational book i think that's what's missing and that's what yes. the, the content teacher is expecting the ELL teacher to kind of right. uh, yeah. come in and do their magic or do whatever they can yeah. do to, to, to create yeah. that, that engagement, right. that exactly. element of motivation in the student. Yeah. And as much as we can do to, to introduce the content, for example, social, science, social studies and uh, uh -huh. English, these two, especially these two, because the others like math and sciences, they, they are not culturally related that as much but these two topics especially in the middle school if the right. topic is not relatable to the student the student is just like uh -huh. they switch off you know, exactly yeah. that engagement then, element that is key yeah. is missing key. yeah and you know i have to say i come from a background that focused mainly on strategies and i you know for many years i worked at in the center the reading center at ut and the whole emphasis was from a cognitive perspective you know, what strategies do you need uh, depending on their level of English proficiency. So it was all based on the stages of second language proficiency and the, the types of the English language approaches depending on where students are. Mm -hmm. And then um, depending on if, if the gap is wider then you provide more scaffolding. So mm -hmm. in other words, uh, we can approach this from a very technical perspective and kind of um, still miss some aspect that is a deeper level of engagement. And so I'm thinking that the examples that Ms. Quevedo and Mr. Pineda provided uh, can be extended with some adaptations to middle school yes. um, by allowing students to have a space where they uh where they share their vision their perspective some way in which their 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 uh the way they view the content is valued mm -hmm. uh, or their background experiences in relationship to the content is mm -hmm. is is 
has merit to be shared in the classroom. Usually prior experiences of students are not considered when learning content. Yes. And so I'm wondering if Ms. <clears throat> Quevedo and Mr. Pineda would, would recommend something. I mean, I one thing that I tried, and this was with, a, with a competent student who, who I could okay. give something as, as homework, was to, I gave this individual um, the task to research what his country was doing at the time of war, for example. Uh -huh. And I, I was asking him to go and find out this information and come back to me. So in a way, I was getting him engaged in the topic right. parallel to what was going on in the classroom, just to, for him uh -huh. to know what the role of his country was in that era, in that time. So I'm trying to do things like that. I don't know. Yeah. It seemed to be effective, but you have to have a really good um, engage student to start with a student right. that you could give a task like that um, yeah to get them to get them working but I would appreciate any any advice yes and I'm wondering if there are like um, experiences in the families of students related mm -hmm. to the content that you're teaching which I've asked them to for example interview uh, a member exactly. of the family yes, yes I have uh, these are some of the things that based on the studies that I've done and the work that I've done in the past came to mind as, as, as tasks to do. Um, but I, yes, I appreciate any, any other experience or uh, work, especially with the young children, because as I said, this is, this is new to me. I, I, back in the days I did work with children, but then most of my career I've been with um, higher education and, and testing and that sort of assessment and that kind of thing. So this is going back to the very critical age of learning. Yeah. So uh, yes, any, any advice would be appreciated. So we have somebody else coming in the waiting room that just joined. So you might. Oh, we have, I'm not taking anybody's time, am I? I'm fine. No. So. Any comments from Ms. Quevedo and Ms. Mr. Pineda? So I would just say that yeah, trying to relate students with um, use their personal experiences, as you said, uh, that's what I would do and try to find texts related uh, to like, for example, with the war. Mm -hmm. If you have a Mexican student, have, have him have, find uh, information about a recent war mm -hmm. that he had experienced or his parents or his grandparents. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, as much as you can re have them relate personal experiences to the war in this case, like in, in that example. Exactly. But I think you're doing a good job. Thank you. Uh, yes, I mean, talking yeah. about personalizing it as well. One of the things I did with the eighth graders was that I created a PowerPoint of my own country because Iran went through a year of war with Iraq in um, back then. And then as a child, I wanted to experience uh, share my experience with them because they were reading a story that had kind of that point of view of a child in the war so I said I had that experience myself and these are some of the pictures of my family and what mm -hmm. happened and that worked a treat that was one of the best things I'd ever done because I didn't expect them to react and come and ask so many questions and that's one of the things I did and as you said mm -hmm. ask them if they could find somebody in the family that has experience and write something about it and talk about it. And it gave them that confidence yeah. to, to speak about uh, experiences like that. Yeah, and if they haven't uh, had any experiences like with war, I would yeah. say like have them uh, imagine what would happen if you were in this kind of war, like in the first world war or the second world war, have them, uh, I mean, leave that. Creating that, um, yes, 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 yes. Correct. That that would be good, especially with the eighth graders. I, I think that that would work really well. I would I would definitely try that to put themselves in in that position as a as a narrator. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of what Mr. Pineda did with the little ones, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. right, Mr. Pineda, you want to ex extend on that? Uh, what what made you think of that as an alternative? And would you think that that's applicable in middle school? Thanks. Yes, I, no, of course, I think so. I think uh, when I did it, it was thinking about a kindergarten environment where what, the main thing they really can do is draw. Uh, mm. The writing is somewhat there, and especially during dual, in dual language setting, they, they're making, they're English speakers who are trying to 
get the Spanish. So of course their Spanish is developing uh, slowly. Um, and I think everything I've heard from you has been honestly amazing. And some of the your things you're saying is like music to my ears <laughs> because like I'm teaching third and fourth grade, but of course, a lot of the things that we, even we're doing, we can translate into middle school and like the narrating part where you mm-hmm. take maybe the story upon so, of somebody else and make it like try mm-hmm. to live it on your own. How could like, that's very powerful, mm-hmm. very, very powerful. But I'm definitely taking the ideas that uh, you mentioned, um, both the teachers in this group mentioned to because I work with an ELL team. So we have the, the people who work with the kinders and, the, and then the up to grade um, six and then it's myself and the high school. So we have different people appointed at different grades. But I have so much to share with them after this session. Uh, when I go back on Monday, I would definitely um, take, take the information I got from your your webinar today to my colleagues in that great band as well. It was amazing, thank you. And if there's any resources that you think could help me even more, <laughs> I would uh, any anything else that I could be using. As I said, uh, it's my first year of teaching in the US. Um, I'm, I'm ready to take notes. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, thank you so much, Artemis, for your engagement and for sticking around at the end. No, that's okay. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate the time to myself We're here at this end of the webinar, so thank you very much. And also a huge thank you to all three of you presenters for um, doing your amazing presentation and sharing all of the wonderful work you've been doing.